name's Drake Parker. I'm Josh Nichols. I should probably be doing my homework. I'm just doing a little homework here. But it's more fun to do this. Man, I'm thirsty. I live here with my mom and my little sister, Megan. I got a great family, even though it's just me and my dad. I love that guy. I love girls. So my mom's been dating this guy. So my dad's been dating this woman. She's really great. He's okay, but he's got this kid that goes to my school. She has a son that goes to my school. Drake. Josh. It's not that I have anything against Josh. I really don't know Drake all that well. But, but he, he seems, seems kind of... Okay. Unusual. Drake is unbelievable. You know, he's just one of those guys who can get away with anything. Ooh, time for snack. He does whatever he wants and, like, never gets in trouble. Ooh, cake is good. It's like he leads a charmed life. Must be nice. Me, I always try to do the right thing. Milk. I follow all the rules. Because if I even just think about doing something wrong, I get busted. I don't get it. <sighs> I wish I knew Drake's secret. Just once, I like to get away with something. Josh, get your feet off the coffee table. Every time. So I've been dating this new girl who goes to my school. Drake's been dating this new girl who goes to our school. Her, Her name, name is Susan. And she is cool, she is funny, she is awesome. She is cool, she is funny, she is awesome. I'm telling you, this girl is all Drake's been thinking about. Susan, Susan, Susan. Susan. I wonder if I'm in love. I've seen Susan around school, but I haven't, like, formally met her yet. Anyway. anyway. I wonder where Drake is with our pizza. I cannot believe I ate an entire pizza. So my new stepbrother situation with Drake is working out pretty well. Living with Josh isn't so bad, but he has got to stop clipping his toenails on my bed. <laughs> Drake's bed sure is comfortable. Bye-bye, toenail! <laughs> anyway, my band is doing great. We're playing tonight at this really cool place, which is why I wrote this new song. It kind of goes... <laughs> Sounds better on guitar. Drake's always rehearsing with his band downstairs in the garage. They're really good, but kind of loud. Makes it hard to study up here sometimes. But mostly, I kind of like, like having a new stepbrother. Step I guess I just wish that Josh would loosen up and have a little more fun. <laughs> Drake's really smart, but he's all about having fun. Fun, fun, fun. It wouldn't kill him to be a little more responsible. Oh, oh, gross. <laughs> oh, come on. You know I think you're awesome. Aw, uh, come on. You know I love you. Oh, hey, hey, I gotta go. Maybe I'll call you this weekend. I'll call you this weekend, okay? Bye, Stephanie. Bye, Grandma. I love talking to girls. I love talking to my Grammy. I just wish it was as easy to talk to females who aren't, you know, elderly. Josh, on the other hand, not so smooth with the ladies. It's like me and girls speak different languages. They speak English, I speak idiot. I don't know, but my dad always says, the, the most, most important, important thing to remember, remember is always, always be, be yourself. yourself. <laughs> Unless you're Josh. Okay, I'm 15 years old, right? I'm gonna be 16 in just a few months. And you know what kind of bugs me? You know what I really hate? Mom and Dad still, still treat, treat me like, like a, a child. child. Don't forget to wash your hands before dinner. Eat your vegetables if you want to grow up big and strong. What, am I nine? <laughs> I'm already both big and strong. Kinda. Mom and Dad are just gonna have to deal with the fact that I'm, I'm not, not a little, little kid, kid anymore. All right, let's try this one more time. <laughs> Call it when you're ready. Ready? Set. Great. Hold on. All right, back at you. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. I gotta say, I'm really glad Drake's 
my new stepbrother. I'm really glad someone invented pizza. <laughs> oh, and bikinis. Yeah, bikinis are cool. But when you have a brother around the same age as you, sometimes it gets a little competitive. Last week, Josh challenged me to see who could hold his breath the longest. We had this contest to see who could hold their breath longer. After two minutes, I won. I lost. Consciousness. <laughs> I was breathing through my nose the whole time. <laughs> oh, and then there was the milk challenge. I bet Josh my allowance that he couldn't chug an entire gallon of milk. But he did it. I lost. I threw up. He puked. It was worth it. <laughs> Living with a new stepbrother? Not as bad as you might think. Having a new stepbrother move in? Worse than you might think. <laughs> you want to know the hardest part about sharing a room with Drake? The worst thing about living with Josh? Sleeping in the same room. I swear, Josh snores like a hobo with a sinus infection. Drink mumbles in his sleep. Loud. It sounds kind of like... Try sleeping with that. But... Even though Drake can keep me awake at night, I love that guy. I'm hungry. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty darn nice of Drake letting me move into his room, and he has turned me on to a lot of cool music, and he... Mustard. <laughs> uh, mustard, mustard, mustard. <sighs> anyway. I guess the important thing to remember about being a new stepbrother is to be respectful of each other, and he took my sandwich, didn't he? <laughs> Josh may snore like a hobo. He makes a good sandwich. Drake! So after dinner tonight, Mom tells me and Josh to do the dishes. You know, Drake's supposed to be helping me do these dishes. But I don't mind. I like working. It's not that I have a problem with working, I just choose not to. To me, getting a job done, and done well, just feels good. I like doing dishes. I like sleeping. Breaking leaves. Playing guitar. Doing homework. Tricking Josh into doing my homework. Well, dishes are done. It's enough guitar for tonight. On to my next activity. Time for my next activity. Hello, room. Hello, Michelle. <laughs> Music. Ah, cheese. If I was stranded on an island and I could only bring a thousand things, I'd bring these headphones, that stereo, and 997 CDs. And a girl. It's not that I like eating cheeses that much. I just like looking at them, sniffing them, feeling them. Do you know that Josh sometimes feels cheese? There's so many different kinds. There's so much cool music out there. You got pop, you got blues, hip hop, you got mozzarella, you got twist, cottage, heavy metal, punk, parmesan, string, jazz, beta, R&B, and of course, my number one cheese. And my favorite music, rock and roll, cheddar. Cheddar! You know, Josh isn't really into music the way I am. You know, Drake doesn't share my love of cheeses. Oh, well. well his loss. loss. Uh, music. Ah, uh, cheese. I'm so excited. I'm so annoyed. My dad told me and Drake that since we're stepbrothers now, we should start trying to hang out together more. My mom's trying to get me to hang out more with Josh. I'm really psyched about it. Kill me. <laughs> Maybe Drake and I could learn to do magic tricks together. Please kill me. <laughs> me and Drake just gotta find stuff that's fun for both of us to do. Maybe I can move to Australia. I hear they have big shrimp there. <laughs> Maybe we could take a cooking class. One sec. Hey, Drake! You wanna take a cooking class together? Sorry! Drake, move to Australia! <laughs> That's not even an Australian accent. Yes, it is. From Bash. <laughs> That's French. Josh does 
really well in school. Drake does really well at everything, except school. Last semester, Josh took two extra classes, got A's in both of them. Last week, Drake took two girls to a concert, kissed them both. Yeah, me, I, I don't do great in school. I'm always bugging him to do his homework. Last week, Josh was bugging me to do my homework. And what does he do? I handcuffed him to a tennis racket. He handcuffed me to a tennis racket. It was so cool. It was so not cool. I wish I had a knack for school. I wish I had a handcuff key. I haven't met too many famous people. One time, the vice president of the United States came here to San Diego. Once, Josh and I were in the same room as the vice president. I got to meet him. I got to meet a 16-year-old granddaughter. He was so vice presidential. She was so hot. After I shook his hand, I started to show him a magic trick. Josh tried to show the vice president a magic trick with a fork. I do this thing where I make a fork go in one ear, and then I pull it through my head and out the other ear. But the bodyguards thought that Josh was trying to attack the vice president. His bodyguards wrestled me to the ground. They confiscated his fork. A big man took my fork. The granddaughter? I made out with her. Until the vice president caught us and chased me down the street. I never did get that fork back. You gotta, gotta be, be careful, careful when you're dealing with famous people. people. I miss that girl. Miss my fork. When I was a little kid, my mom told me I have a lucky star. I sweat when I sleep. In fourth grade, I won class president. Fourth grade, not a good year for the Joshi. Then I won some music competition, uh, hundred yard dash, best hair. I used to get really nervous in school. I won a rabbit at the fair. Not sure how. Nice bunny. I named him George. Once, I was supposed to take a spelling test, so I actually hid under my bed. I got stuck. I entered George into a rabbit contest. He won. They had to use power tools to get me out from under the bed. And lotion. I guess sometimes things just don't always go the way you want them to. Things just work out the way you want them to. Okay, you want to know the number one thing about turning 16? Being 15 was fun. You want to know why 16 is better? Two words. Two words. Driver's license. <laughs> I am so psyched to be able to drive a car. I am so ready to get behind the wheel. I'll be able to drive Megan to soccer practice. I'll be able to back over Megan's bike in the driveway. <laughs> I can cruise to the supermarket and pick up a melon. You know Josh loves melons? <laughs> Melons are special fruits. Don't let anyone tell you different. <laughs> now, I like grapes. Which, if you think about it, are just like tiny little individual melons. <laughs> Drake's always trying to tell me that grapes are like small melons. But I ain't buying it. <laughs> Wait, what was I just saying before the stuff about melons? Wait, what was I talking about before? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Driver's license. <laughs> I can't wait to get my driver's license. I am ready to drive. And I like grapes. The grape is no milk. <laughs> you know, I love little kids. Kids are awesome. You know what I like best about them? The coolest thing about hanging with kids? They, they can, can learn, learn a lot from, from me. <laughs> I used to tutor this little Portuguese boy in math. His name was Paolo. One time, my mom made me babysit Megan and three of her friends. I was teaching him about long division, and he threw a golf club at me. A nine iron. <laughs> mom told me to take the kids to a museum, but instead, I took them to ride go-karts. The club hit me in the eye. 
bruised my retina. <laughs> After I gave the kids these huge cups of coffee. Oh, man, you should have seen them on those go-karts. It was, it was out, out of control. control. <laughs> no, I complained to Paulo's father, but he just shouted at me in Portuguese. After the go-karts, we all piled into a cab and went to Chuck E. Cheddar's. I like tutoring, but I hate Paulo. <laughs> ah, kids. <laughs> Paulo. <laughs> You know, finding the perfect girl to go out with takes a lot of luck. Some people are just born lucky. I am not one of those people. Sometimes a girl may seem perfect, but then just turn out to be horrible. Ready? Heads. It's tails. Like Gabrielle. I dated her for almost a month, and then I found out her favorite food. Horse meat. And tails. Heads. Every time. I mean, I thought I was in love with that girl. But then she ate a horse burger. <laughs> you see, see what, what I, I mean, mean by, by unlucky? unlucky? You know, they say the best things in life are free. A lot of people tell you money isn't important. They're yeah, lying. <laughs> okay, there may be things that are more important than money. Money isn't everything. But without money... Hey, whoa, what, what's happening with my box? It's, it's getting way too small. <laughs> okay, why am I in a triangle? <laughs> Hello? Can we increase the size of my box, please? Can I go back to a square or a rectangle? Okay, now I'm too big. I'm upside down here. A little smaller. Blood rushing to my head. What is going on? I think we're having a technical glitch. What's up, brothers? Megan, get off the screen. Hey. She's got the video of the Xbox. Pet figures. <laughs> Let's see what this thing can do. No, no, make it, make it. Do not touch me. Stop. Oh, 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 that's good being me. You know one of the best things about having Drake is my brother? You want to know what's been kind of bugging me lately about the whole Josh thing? We, we hang, hang out, out together, together all the time. time. It's awesome. It gets to be a little much. We have breakfast together. We have breakfast together. We go to school together. We go to school together. We eat dinner together. We eat dinner together. And we even get to crash in the same room together. And then the next day, and then the next day, it starts all over again. It starts all over again. <laughs> oh. Oh. You know, I always try to do the right thing. You know what I say? If it feels good, do it. <laughs> Here are some tips that'll help you stay out of trouble. You want to know how to have fun? Listen up. Always go to bed on top. Stay up all night till like four in the morning. <laughs> Never miss class. When the teacher's not looking, climb out the window. <laughs> Always do your homework before you watch TV. Always remember, television is far more important than homework. <laughs> hey, is Drake telling you bad stuff? Oh, vegetables? Uncool. <laughs> Drake? Stop poisoning the youth of America, okay? <laughs> Don't worry about homework. Eat candy, watch tons of TV. <laughs> Are you giving the people a positive message? Yeah. Okay, positively, keep your room messy, play music loud, chocolate for breakfast, got it? <laughs> Don't be a troublemaker. Don't be a dork. <laughs> okay, Drake's a pretty awesome guy. Sometimes Josh is ridiculous. 
but he doesn't understand the importance of setting limits. Case in point, take last Halloween. Last Halloween, me and Josh went to this huge party at the San Diego Megadome. Drake and I were at this party, right? So I found a garbage bag and loaded it up with like 20 pounds of candy. And Drake comes home with this ginormous sack of candy. So Josh goes on his computer and prints out a schedule of when I should eat it. So I created a compu calendar to help Drake plan his candy consumption. Yeah, I was supposed to eat like two pieces of candy per day for the next year. Then he locked me in the closet and ate the entire bag of candy in like a half hour. Then I locked Josh in a closet and ate the entire sack of candy. And then he threw up. I puked. And after that, he falls asleep. Then I fell asleep, so Josh slept in the closet that night. Kids gotta know his limitations. It's fun locking Josh in closets. Sometimes when you plan to do one thing, something totally different happens. Once I planned to ride my bike to the mall, I hit a bus. <laughs> oh, oh, and there was this one time I planned a surprise birthday party for Josh. And I'll never forget the surprise party Drake planned for my birthday. When he walked in, we all yelled surprise. I just wasn't expecting to be surprised by all those people in our room. Josh was so shocked, he threw a punch and nailed our Aunt Barbara right in the jaw. <laughs> I punched my Aunt Barbara, uh, but it was an accident. When she woke up, she was so mad, she took the present she bought for Josh and ran over it in our driveway. And then she ran over my new cell phone with her truck. The whole thing was pretty hysterical. The whole thing was pretty disturbing. Well, the point is, the point is, whenever you plan something, if you're gonna punch your aunt in the face, don't be surprised when things take an unexpected twist. She just might run over your new cell phone. Yep. Yeah. Have you ever been really good friends with someone you never even met before? Have you ever been really thirsty, you just didn't feel like getting up? See, for over a year now, I've been emailing this girl from a foreign country. One sec. Hello? Yeah, this is uh, Lieutenant Peterson with the San Diego Police Department. Oh, is it? Yeah, you're gonna need to get a can of soda upstairs for your brother, Code 3. Code this! Anyway, back to my e-pal, Yuka. It's, it's kind of weird to be friends with someone you've never met or even talked to on the phone, but I... If you call me one more time, I will take an entire bottle of maple syrup and pour it all over your underwear drawer. So for the next nine days, you could walk around with sticky butt. Josh, it's your father. Nice try, you big dupe. Man, if, if he's so thirsty, why can't he come downstairs, go in the kitchen and get him some... You know the old expression, you can't judge a book by its cover? You know, the first time I met Josh, I thought he was kind of goofy. Like the first time I met Drake, I didn't think he was the friendliest guy. I was having lunch at school. I saw Drake having lunch at the cool kids table. And this kid Josh comes up to me and says, Hey there, want to see a magic trick? So to show him I was cool, I did this magic trick where I make two olives disappear. Up my nose. And then Josh takes two olives and shoves them right up his nose. So there I am with a nose full of olives. <laughs> and they got stuck up there. And, and somehow they got wedged up in my sinus cavity. Yeah, so Josh starts yelling. So I start screaming, Help me! Help me! I can't get the olives out of my nose! But a few years later, my mom married his dad. But then in ninth grade, my dad married his mom. Yeah, Josh and I became brothers. Yeah, Drake and I are buds. So I guess the point is... Yeah, but the real point is, you don't really know somebody until you really get to know them. There's nothing funnier than a fourth grade goob with olives stuck up his nose. <laughs> you know what's great about parents? I'll tell you something about parents. They always keep an eye out for you. <laughs>
You gotta always keep your eye on them. Uh, like this one time I was climbing a tree? Uh, like once. Josh climbed all the way up this big tree. I fell. <laughs> then he falls. But my underpants got hooked on a branch. And he ends up dangling from a branch by his underwear. <laughs> so Dad sees me swinging and runs over to help me, right? So here comes Dad to the rescue. <laughs> he grabbed a ladder? He grabs a ladder and starts trying to climb up it to get to Josh. He climbed up and tried to unhook my underpants. <laughs> and then the ladder falls backwards. <laughs> then the ladder fell over and Dad went crashing down. So, so we've learned two things here. You gotta keep an eye on your parents. You know, my underpants caused me a lot of pain that day. <laughs> your underwear can hurt you. <laughs> when I was in the third grade, I had the cutest little turtle ever. When I was a little kid, I had the hottest babysitter ever. <laughs> His name was Shelby. Her name was Debbie. I remember she used to like to eat grapes. I remember he used to love to eat bugs. And whenever I get scared, she'd hold my hand. And whenever he gets scared, he'd pee in my hand. <laughs> but then Debbie moved to Wisconsin. But then one day Sheldon uh, passed on. So my mom got me a new babysitter. So my dad bought me a lizard. Her name was Mrs. Finkel. His name was Julio. She used to make me eat warm tuna fish and watch educational television. He used to climb up my chest and bite my throat. And the more I hated that old lady, and the more I hated that vicious lizard, the more I missed Debbie, the more I missed Sheldon. I guess I never really appreciated Debbie. I guess I never realized how much I loved Sheldon until she was gone, until Julio tried to kill me. <laughs> The biggest difference between me and Drake is, I'm responsible. Drake's irresponsible. Uh, hi. I kind of forgot I was supposed to have a story ready. Uh, oh, like the time Drake and I fixed up that doom buggy? Wow, this is awkward. Well, one time, Dad let us take the doom buggy to the desert so we could ride around it. And, like, two minutes after that, we ran out of gas. It was... A Hello? Hey, what story are you telling? You cannot steal my story. I'm not. I just want to know because it might help me think of one. Well, I'm telling them about the time that we went to the desert and brought the doom buggy and... Oh, perfect. About... Thanks. Drake? Drake, you better not steal my story or I swear so one time I'm me and Josh take the doom buggy out to the desert, right? And Josh tells me to make sure it's filled with gas and it breaks oh, some no, water. No. You know, I... I hate it when Drake gets me into situations. I love getting Josh into situations. <laughs> like one time, he entered me into a chicken wing eating contest. Like once, I entered Josh into a chicken wing eating contest? So they ring the bell, and I start scarfing down chicken wings as fast as I can. And I swear, Josh would have won. But the contest got stopped when these crazy people showed up to protest. But the contest got stopped by the PFCR. The people for chicken's rights. <laughs> they were very upset. They were so mad, they threw Josh in a lake. I was thrown into a lake. <laughs> so I jumped in and helped him swim to shore. <laughs> I was moist and angry. <laughs> then I ate some of the leftover chicken wings. <laughs> there were three things I learned that day. I learned a few things that day. Number one. <clears throat> The people for chicken's rights? <laughs> Crazy! The PFCR? Out of control. <laughs> Number two? Drake can get me mixed up in some pretty insane situations. Josh? Not the best swimmer. And last? Chicken wings? Pretty, pretty good. good. <laughs> as far as brothers go, Josh is okay. I love having Drake as a brother. But every now and then? But occasionally, I want to hit him with something heavy. <laughs> but sometimes, I, I just want to grab his little neck and... <laughs> <laughs>
Like the time you made fudge brownies for me and Monique, this hot girl I was dating. Like the time I entered my fancy rat, Bobo, into the rodent show. <laughs> Monique was this French girl that was allergic to nuts. Bobo was this rat who I trained to do all these cool tricks. One night, Monique comes over to hang out, and Josh brings us this big tray of brownies, right? But Drake bought another rat that looked like Bobo and switched them as a little joke. <laughs> So me and Monique scarfed down some of Josh's brownies. So then I try to show one of the judges this trick where Bobo licks your nose. And then all of a sudden Monique starts sweating and her face swells up like a watermelon. <laughs> and this deranged imposter rat bites the judge on his nose and won't let go. <laughs> and she starts going, why do I, why are you giving me nuts? You know I'm allergic to such nuts. <laughs> and the judge starts yelling, the rat is biting my nose! The rat is biting my nose! But you know what I learned that night? Even though Drake can drive me crazy, I love that guy. Some French girls are really allergic to nuts. Okay, in my whole life, I've only had one real girlfriend. In my entire life, I've only had like 74 girlfriends. <laughs> but the one thing I've already learned about dating, and the one thing I've learned from all that dating, you have to let the girl know you've got to make sure the girl understands. The, the guy's, guy's in, in charge. charge. <laughs> like right now, I'm dating this girl, Lucy. You know my girlfriend, Mindy. And last night, she starts yelling at me just because I happened to stare at this other hot girl who walked by. <laughs> Well, yesterday, Mindy gets all up on my case just because I showed up 20 minutes late to pick her up. She yelled at me, I yelled at her. Then we got in this big argument, and finally I just said, I'm out of here. <laughs> and I haven't talked to her since. You know, sometimes you just gotta let a girl know who's in charge. And when she calls, she better be ready to do some serious apologizing. And there's Lucy now. Hello? Oh, hey, Mindy. I'm really sorry. It was all my fault. I'm, I'm really it's sorry. You know, I was totally wrong, and you yes. were totally right. Yes, yes I yes. need your proof, and I promise I know. I'm right. You know, it's amazing how much we can learn from animals. You know, it's amazing how gullible Josh can be. <laughs> like this little goldfish I won at the San Diego Fair. Last summer, Josh won a goldfish at the fair. I named him Ronaldo. He named him Ronaldo. So my biology teacher helped me create this special fish food for him. So Josh starts feeding him this special fish food that he made. And after only two days, guess what happened? I took Ronaldo out of his fish bowl and replaced him with another goldfish twice his size. <laughs> Ronaldo doubled in size. Josh thought his fish food was magic. My fish food was like magic! <laughs> and after three more days, I took the big fish out and replaced him with an even bigger goldfish. <laughs> and in only one week, Ronaldo went from like this big to like the size of a cantaloupe. <laughs> and then Josh ran out of all of his special fish food. But then I ran out of my special fish food, so I just started feeding him fish food from the store. <laughs> so when Josh was asleep, I took out the gigantic goldfish and I put back the original fish, you know, little Ronaldo. And the next morning, Ronaldo had shrunk from the size of a cantaloupe back down to his original teeny self. Anybody want to buy a three pound gigantic goldfish? Okay, teachers, they're some of the greatest people in our lives. All right, teachers, some of the most annoying people in our lives. <laughs> Except for Coach Bilbo. And the worst was Coach Bilbo. It's not that he was a bad teacher. He was a bad teacher. <laughs> Just that he'd always get so angry you couldn't understand what he was saying. All he did was yell, but you couldn't understand a word out of the guy's mouth. <laughs> he'd be like, <laughs> yeah, If I was like three seconds late to class, he'd be all, so I'd say, I'm sorry, Coach Bilbo. What do you want me to do? And I'd be like, what? 
And then he'd get madder and go, And then he'd get like furious and go, And the madder he got, the less I can understand him. And I'd be like, dude, what are you saying? But even though Coach Bilbo wasn't my favorite teacher, I felt sad when he finally retired. I'll never forget the day Coach Bilbo finally retired. I will always remember the last thing he said on his way out. He walked through the front door of the school, looked back and said, You know what makes me feel good? Volunteering to help people. You know what's fun? Instant messaging four girls at once. <laughs> like one time, I made Drake come with me to volunteer at this home for the elderly. But it was not fun when Josh brought me to some old folks home to help out. <laughs> we met this couple who was in their late 80s, Murray and Francine Boschwitz. Which is where I got to meet Murray and Francine Boschwitz. <laughs> Mrs. Boschwitz tried to cut Drake's hair because she thought he was a hippie. <laughs> Next thing I know, she's coming at me with scissors yelling, hold still, hippie! And then Mr. Boschwitz starts telling us these stories. Then her husband starts yapping about the old days. Which wouldn't have been so bad, except that he was eating meatloaf while he talked. And the whole time he's talking, he's scarfing down meatloaf. It was kind of like, imagine this. When I was 17, I did it the other day, and all of it cut. Don't give me one good reason why they should have canceled for Anta. <laughs> anyway, I went back to that old folks home a bunch of times. I never went back there again. Because I really like cheering up old people. Because instant messaging girls is way more fun than having Mr. Bosch would spit meatloaf on your face. <laughs> You know, sometimes people just make mistakes. You know, nothing's more fun than watching Josh screw up. <laughs> like, I will never forget the time Drake and I were at the San Diego Galleria. Like this one time, he made me go to the mall with him. I needed a special shampoo. You know, for my scalp issues. <laughs> so we're standing by the food court and I see this older person. And Drake spots my Grammy walking into the pottery barrel. So I say to Josh, hey, there's your Grammy. Go give her a hug. So I hand Drake my sack with the shampoo. So he gives me his nerd shampoo. <laughs> and I run over to the pottery barrel. And he takes off full speed running towards the pottery barrel. And, you know, I'm yelling, Grammy, Grammy, it's me, Joshy! And he's yelling, Grammy, Grammy, it's me, Joshy! <laughs> and then I finally get to her, spin around to give her a big old hug. But it wasn't his Grammy. <laughs> and then I realized it was an older gentleman. <laughs> it was a dude. <laughs> he just happened to look like my Grammy from the back. So the old guy goes, get off of me. And then he knees Josh right in the place you do not want to be kneed. For an old man, he had a powerful knee. <laughs> anyway, from the back, I really did think the old man was Josh's Grammy. I didn't get mad at Drake, though, because he really did think that old man was my Grammy. Or did I? <laughs> or did he? My brother Drake, he's all about immediate gratification. There's brownies in there, and I want them. <laughs> immediate gratification means when you want something, you gotta have it, like, right now. I could be eating a brownie right now, if it wasn't for Josh. <laughs> See, I came up with this amazing brownie recipe when I was only nine years old. He calls them fudgy boos. I named them fudgy boos. But come on, I was nine. So tonight he spends like an hour and a half mixing his brownie ingredients in a bowl. And while I was making them tonight, Drake's like standing over me the whole time. He wouldn't even let me lick the spoon. And he keeps going, let me lick the spoon, let me lick the spoon. I just wanted to lick the spoon. I don't want his tongue on my spoon. Man, when are they gonna be ready? They'll be ready in about 25 more minutes. And you know what? Okay, you know what? They'll be worth the wait. I am not waiting. <laughs> you see, Drake's gonna learn something tonight. 
he's going to learn that some things are just worth waiting for. Oh. Oh, it's like, like warm brownie soup. Who realized that patience is a virtue? Oh my God, why didn't I do this five minutes ago? All right, everyone knows that Josh can be annoying. It's no secret that Drake can cause me extreme aggravation. But you want to know who constantly drives me insane? But you know who really gets my blood pressure up into the danger zone? She's 11. She's a girl. She's evil. She's a demon. She's my little sister, Megan. Last month, she put kitty litter in my sneakers. Did you know she signed me up for the Mexican army? And let's not forget the time she dyed all my underwear pink. She gave my cell phone number to three hobos. I do not look good in pink panties. Now, every other time my phone rings, it's a hobo. One day, oh, oh, one day, baby. One day she's gonna push me too far. Revenge, revenge. Hello? Can I come over to your house? No, leave me alone, hobo. <laughs> it's just not right. <laughs> okay, you want to know something about Josh? Yeah, I'll tell you a little secret about Drake. He can be the most irritating human on the planet. Sometimes he aggravates me to a point where I just want to go... I'm not doing too good in English, right? You know Drake hates my girlfriend, Mindy, right? So last week, he goes up to our teacher. So on Saturday, Mindy's walking up our driveway. And Josh tells her I should have a tutor. And Drake sprays her with the hose. A tutor? A hose! I, I can't take a shower without finding his hair on the soap. He pees near the toilet. Sometimes, Sometimes he, he just, just drives me insane. insane. Get this. Drake says I have bad luck. I say Josh has bad luck. You know why? I do not have bad luck. Because he has bad luck. <laughs> Anytime something terrible happens to me, it's because of Drake. But Josh blames all his problems on me. Like, why did I get food poisoning? Drake forgot to refrigerate the clams. <laughs> and he gives me no credit for the nice stuff I do for him. Why do I have foot burns? Drake accidentally set my socks on fire. Like his desk lamp. It was flickering, right? So I fixed the switch. Well, better get started on my homework. I just think Josh needs to appreciate me a little more, you know? Because if you ask me, his life is way more fun when I'm around. I'm not asking for like a pat on the back every day, but... You know, I just think he could give me a little more credit now, you know? I mean, come on. Mm, I like juice. I'll tell you this. Handling a bad situation can be very stressful. Watching Josh deal with a bad situation can be very hysterical. <laughs> like the time I donated blood. Like the time he donated blood at school. Oh, so this attractive nurse sticks a needle in my arm, right? This insanely hot nurse shoves a needle in Josh's arm. Oh, but no one told me that it was the nurse's first day on the job. It was her first day being a nurse. So as soon as my blood starts coming out, and when she sees the first drop of Josh's blood, she faints. She passes out. And when she fell down, the tube slipped off the needle, and my blood started just spurting all over the room. Spurting! Josh's arm was spewing blood like a garden hose. Oh yeah, so after I lose like a quart of blood, I passed out. Then he fainted. I was so unconscious. I got blood all over my blue sweater. Yeah, good times. Look at this sweater. Look at it. So me and Drake have this great aunt Catherine. Have you ever met my great aunt Catherine? 
No? Well, hey, lucky you. She's almost 90 years old. She's like 90,000 years old. She's not nice. She is mean. Mean to the bone. Something's not right about Aunt Catherine. She collects hair from people she doesn't even know well. Oh, and get this. Aunt Catherine's, Catherine's getting, getting married. married. I mean, who wants to get married at 89 years old? You know, Josh and I disagree on a lot of stuff, but I bet he hates Aunt Catherine just as much as I do. I wonder if Drake hates Aunt Catherine as much as I do. <laughs> do you? Totally. <laughs> Okay, women sometimes can be tricky. Girls are so easy to figure out. <laughs> like when I was in the fourth grade, this girl named Becky Hummus said she had a crush on me. Like last year, this girl Allison Fletcher asked me out. But Becky didn't really like me. But Allison wasn't really into me. She just knew that every day in my sack lunch, I brought doodle cakes. <laughs> she was just trying to make her ex-boyfriend jealous. I was being used. I was being used. <laughs> that semester, she ate almost every doodle cake I brought to school. Then she got back together with her ex-boyfriend. By the end of fourth grade, she weighed over 200 pounds. <laughs> I kind of missed Allison, so started making out with her sister. And now, Becky Hummus wears gigantic pants. <laughs> I think her sister kisses even better. You know, they make fat-free doodle cakes now. I wonder if they have a third sister. But it's too late for Becky. I'll tell you what. Hey, how you doing? Drake just thinks he's such hot stuff. Josh is a silly brother. Well, he always thinks he can beat me at everything. So guess what we bet today? He bet me that he could paint a picture of Abraham Lincoln in a bikini before I could stack 150 cans of tuna fish into a pyramid. That he could stack 150 cans of tuna fish into a pyramid before I could paint a picture of Abraham Lincoln wearing a bikini. Four cans to go! Oh, man, Josh is probably almost finished. Five seconds to pyramid! <laughs> Whoops. Ta-da! I'll never forget the first time I ever did a magic trick. I'll never forget the first time I ever kissed a girl. <laughs> it was this trick called the disappearing bottle. The girl's name was Daphne. See, the trick is you touch a soda bottle to your head and it disappears right before your eyes. See, the trick is you just gotta find a cute girl with really soft lips and nothing to do. <laughs> Observe as I touch the bottle to my head and watch it disappear. Hey, I'm Drake. <laughs> Josh and Kazam! <laughs> Maybe I should practice some more. Maybe you should practice some more. <laughs> You know what? I've been noticing. There's a pattern in my life. Whenever Josh gets me involved in something, every time Drake drags me into one of his little adventures, things, things go, go bad. Bad. <laughs> oh, bad. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? You do? Oh, you do. <laughs> well, OK. Then I guess I've made my point. I mean, uh... <laughs> you know, it's... It's just that, uh... <laughs> I was gonna tell you a little story. Well, I, I had some examples. Uh, about Josh, you know, being annoying. Drake in his irritating ways. <laughs> but 
if you already get it. But since you already know what I mean, I, I guess I'm done. Enjoy the program. great when things turn out different than you plan don't you hate it when things don't go the way you plan <laughs> like last tuesday me and josh really wanted to see this movie but first we had to go to the dentist drake and i were gonna catch a movie after we got our teeth cleaned but the dentist tells me his 17 year old niece is in town <laughs> but the dentist told me my gums were inflamed <laughs> and his niece is like crazy hot <laughs> inflamed and pussy <laughs> So the dentist says to me, we'll clean your teeth another day. Here's 200 bucks. Go show my niece a good time. So the dentist takes a sharp metal thing with a hook and just starts digging into my gums. So I take her to this Mexican place. And then he sneezes and accidentally pokes a hole right through my tongue. Look at this. <laughs> and the waiter messed up my lunch order. So he gave me six burritos, no charge. All I wanted was to see a nice movie. I just thought I was gonna catch a movie, but instead... But instead... I end up with a hot girl, 200 bucks, and a half dozen free burritos. I spent three hours having a sneezy dentist sew up my tongue hole. Yeah, things don't always turn out like you plan. Things don't always turn out how you plan. Okay, one of the things that freaks me out most about Drake is that he's totally unpredictable. I just bought something so cool. Just when you think Drake's gonna turn right, boom, he turns left. <laughs> it's a sound effects blaster and it's insanely loud. Here, I'll set it to uh, siren. <laughs> One time, Drake was supposed to order me a chicken breast, but instead he ordered me... <laughs> Siren. Okay. All right, let's see what other sounds this thing can make. All right, we've got building exploding, car crashing, fat lady screaming. Anyway, what was I talking about? Ooh, rapid firecrackers. Just when you think Drake's gonna do one thing, he just totally do this thing. Okay, let's hear that fat lady scream. Oh, Josh, come on back. What was that? Dude, I don't know what you mean. Oh, come on! What, you didn't even hear those, those firecrackers. Why, well, it sounded like they were coming to the first... We should get those stairs carpeted. Hi, hi, hey, uh, you gotta give me a minute. Uh, there's an emergency. So I'm at my barber's birthday party, right? This girl's trying to talk to me, but I got a mouthful of pickle chips, so I'm thinking, who am I? Oh, hang on for a sec. What? Dude, you ate the last fruit pop up. So? They were Megan's! You ate Megan's last fruit popple! You ate one? Yes, and I was very careful to leave one for Megan, which you ate! Oh. Can I go now? Yeah, you can go buy another box of fruit popple so Megan won't kill us! What? Uh huh? Dude, dude, I'm losing you. Uh... I hear you fine. You know what? I'm gonna have to call you back. I'm underwater. Yeah. Drake, find some fruit popples! Drake, answer me! Do I eat my fruit popples? No! <laughs> oh, man. Drake and I have this huge chemistry test tomorrow morning. Me and Josh have this insanely important chemistry test tomorrow. So, I've been studying all night, every night, for a week. So, I've been playing lots of ping pong. <laughs> Our teacher, Mr. Rowland, is really tough. I mean, if you're even one minute late to his class, he's not gonna let... 
Hello? Come upstairs and play ping pong with me. No. All right, I'm studying, and you should be too. So ping pong? No. Anyway, I've come up with a great way to remember the atomic weight of the element. See what I do? I... Yeah, what? Where are you? Downstairs. You said you were going to come up and play ping pong. I said no such thing. So what, you coming up? No, I'm studying. Okay, I get first serve. What is wrong with you? I mean, I do pretty well in chemistry, you know, but it's not like my strongest subject. And, and this test tomorrow counts for a huge percentage of our grade. Well, you quit calling me? Ping pong time. No. <laughs> Come on. I get the good paddle. You get the bad one. Be right up. <laughs> Why do people at school always gossip and spread rumors? A couple weeks ago, I was bored at school, so I started telling people stuff about Josh. <laughs> this story started going around that I eat squirrels. <laughs> I told everyone Josh was on this new squirrel diet. <laughs> and then the rumors got even worse. Then I made up worse stuff. Somehow, people got the idea that after I eat the squirrels, I use their fur to make my own underwear. It was all lies. Oh, the new rumor about me, and I don't get this one at all. <laughs> it said I have an extra toe growing out of my belly button. People will believe anything. <laughs> For crying out loud, my belly button is toeless. You can ask my swim coach, he's seen it. Rumors are fun. <laughs> it's so untrue! <laughs> In life, no matter how hard you try to do the right thing, sometimes you just mess up. Hey, let's face it. Half the fun of being a teenager is screwing stuff up. <laughs> like this one time after I used Dad's car, I forgot to set the parking brake. Like one time, I borrowed Dad's car after Josh used it. It was weird, because... I was, like, so sure I set that parking brake. Luckily, Josh didn't know I used the car after he did. <laughs> anyway, it ends up rolling down our street and crashes into our neighbor's mailbox. <laughs> this is fudge. <laughs> so the car rolls down the street and just takes out this old lady's mailbox. <laughs> it was horrible. It was kind of cool. <laughs> but... I went straight to mom and dad and told them it was my fault. Hey, I would have confessed, but I had a date with Samantha Bush that weekend, and I was not going to risk getting grounded. I didn't have enough money to fix Mrs. Futch's mailbox, so she made me do chores to pay for it. Samantha Bush is such a good kisser. I had to mow her lawn, and oh, she even made me wash her hair. She had such long, soft, blonde hair. Her scalp had sores on it. Yeah, I like that Samantha Bush. I hate that Mrs. Fudge. Drake is always getting me in trouble, which I do not like. You're not normal if you don't get in trouble once in a while. Like last weekend, I, I tried to do a nice thing by taking Drake to visit my cousin Skippy's dairy farm. So last weekend, Josh drags me to his bow-legged cousin's dairy farm. <laughs> Skippy's a bit bow-legged, but it's not that noticeable. You could drive a truck between his legs. <laughs> so at around midnight, Drake tries to tell me cows are ticklish. <laughs> so the first night we're there, I told Josh cows are ticklish. So he talks me into sneaking out of my cousin's house. So we sneak out of bow-leggy's house? <laughs> and we go to the milking barn. And I take Josh to the barn where they milk all the cows. Where he makes me go try to tickle one of the cows! <laughs> So he walks right up to this huge cow and tickles it. Which made the cow angry. <laughs> the cow was not happy. Next thing I know, I got a mad cow chasing me up on the Grove Road. <laughs> and now we're both grounded. I, I can't believe I have to stay in this house all weekend. See ya. <laughs> I should have known cows aren't ticklish. <laughs> I knew cows weren't ticklish. <laughs> tell you, my little sister Megan, she's really starting to grow up. Ah, little Megan. 
She's not a baby anymore. I remember when she was just nine years old. I remember back about four years ago, the stunts she pulled were so childish. Her pranks used to be so simple. Like the time she rubbed my clean underwear with bacon fat. <laughs> like the time she buttered the stairs, you know, so I'd slip and fall and hurt myself. <laughs> then she got a little older and her pranks got more clever. And then her pranks got more sophisticated. Like when I was in a hot tub and she put two baby sharks in the water. <laughs> Like when she told the police I buried Josh in the backyard. <laughs> oh, Megan. <laughs> oh, Megan! <laughs> so listen, you've all heard me tell you a lot of stories about me and Josh. Over the years, I've told you a whole lot about me and my brother Drake. But this time, I want to talk to your little brothers and sisters. But for the next couple of minutes, I want to talk to the kids out there under the age of six. Hello. What's your name? Hi. Who are you? What is your favorite thing to eat? What games do you like to play? Me too. Hey, do you like me? Do you want to be my friend? Aw, oh, thank you. What is that supposed to mean? You think I'm handsome? What a special thing to say. What? Well, who are you calling a dork? Hey, 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 go get your mother. Yeah, I'm talking to you. A present for me? I just, just put your kid right in front of the TV set because I got a few things to say. A, a, a plate of cookies? Oh, yummy. I, I think it's pretty rude to tell a person that he's a... Drake Parker. I'm Josh Nichols. I should probably be doing my homework. Just doing a little homework here. You know, there's an old song by the Stones that says you can't always get what you want. Drake always gets what he wants. But I usually get what I want. I, I guess Drake's one of those guys who has a lucky star. Josh may think I'm the lucky one, but I bet you things start going his way. And the one thing I can always count on, but one thing I know for sure, whenever I hang out with Josh, whenever I get mixed up with Drake, things always turn out... unusual. <laughs> okay. You know, Josh should start trying to be a little more like me. Drake would be so much better off if he acted more like me. I mean, if Mom or Walter tells him he's not allowed to do something, he listens to him. When a parent tells you no, you gotta respect that, but Drake just does whatever you... Uh, who is this guy? Who? You! I'm Dave. What are you doing here? I don't know. I just bought a new webcam hooked it up, and turned it on. Is there a problem? Yeah, yeah, you shouldn't be on this screen. It, it, this is a private channel. So how do I turn myself off? I don't know. Get out of here! But I want to stay. All right, fine, okay, but I'm just gonna keep going anyway. <laughs> you better keep quiet, Dave. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh... Oh, Josh always has to be little Mr. Perfect. Uh... Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, Drake just thinks that no, no matter what he, he does, he, he can just... Uh, oh, okay, this is ridiculous. 
Josh out. <laughs> Drake, <laughs> he just thinks he can beat me at everything. I can pretty much beat Josh at everything. Like today. Like today. Like today. Like today. I told Josh that I could drink way more cups of coffee than he can. And Drake said he could drink way more cups of coffee than me. He said that. Oh, yeah, that's what he said. He said it. <sighs> that makes 26. 26 down. Come on. The only bummer about drinking too much coffee is it makes it feel all hyper and jittery. You know, the only downside of drinking too much coffee is that it makes you feel all hyper and jittery. Hyper and jittery, jittery, hyper, hyper, jittery, jittery, hyper, hyper, jittery. <laughs> But Josh never said I couldn't drink decaf.